I've been around the world. I don't know how many countries, probably over 40 some countries. I've been around a lot of, a lot of missionaries and minist ministries. But I think this is the greatest ministry that I've ever known in the world. I really do. Because uh, without the tools, without the Word of God, without being able to share that with another soul, you know, we don't have it. And, that, and I'm so thankful to be here. It's a real honor and a real blessing and a real privilege. Hebrews 11, 6, it says, By faith, you know, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And the more I think about that, I think, Lord, that is a powerful verse, impossible. And, you know, I travel uh, uh, everywhere I go in this world. People say, well, why are you going there? What are you doing this for? It's for one reason and one reason only. To touch one life for Jesus Christ. Back in 1985, I felt the Lord put it on my heart to go into the Mosquito Coast in Nicaragua. It's a long story. I wrote a story on that, and it was a very difficult time. But sometimes we don't take the scriptures literally. When Jesus says, if you're not willing to forsake all for my name's sake, you're not worthy to be my disciple. And he put me in that position. I ended up hitchhiking. Hitchhiking to the jungles of Nicaragua back in 85. And I thought, it was the craziest thing to do. As he led me, I ended up in a war zone. In a guerrilla camp. On the Mosquito Coast. It was a... I can't go into how long and what I went through. I went through so much to get there, but the Lord got me there. And I'm here. I had no way of getting back home. I had no money left. Didn't even know how I was going to get home. But I asked a particular soldier who had, spoke some English. I said, if there's anything I could bring back to you, what would it be? And they needed everything. They needed everything and anything. He looked at me and said, I'd like to have 800 pocket-sized Spanish Bibles with Proverbs and Psalms and a full Bible with concordance and dictionary for me and my men. Of all the things he asked for the Word of God and I knew that the Lord took me away from my family to do that and I went back and that's when I found out about World Missionary Press and I believe even on that trip when I went back we got, we got uh, about four or five boxes of scripture booklets. We were able to get these Bibles in Spanish and God provided an absolute miracle for me to get, go back and to get in there. And that started what I've been doing ever since. That particular man was killed on my, my third trip in. But he was the man that inspired me and challenged me through the Lord that, you know, one soul is worth everything. To touch one's life for Jesus Christ. Um, one of the pastors we had met... He had come over the border on his little bicycle and their motorcycles, and we loaded them up with about 10 boxes of Vietnamese scripture booklets, uh, probably the way to God and help from above and whatever, and Bibles. Now, he got busted. He got caught. And in, in that country, they fined him $500. You know what it is? $500 for a Vietnamese pastor. It's like over a year's. And they took his motorcycle, and they took everything away from him and threatened his life. Well, we went back the next trip. We bought him a motorcycle, loaded up one more, uh, I think about 10 or 12 more boxes of scriptures, about 20 or 30 more Vietnamese Bibles, and he headed back in. And that is the heart of the people that you are reaching. We had called, we have, we have done something we call high-speed evangelism. Oftentimes we'll go through villages that we're not going to work in. We show the Jesus film and that. I'm always thinking, Lord, do these people, you know, we're passing through these villages. Do they have their, so we roll them up with a little rubber band and we hand them out the window. They chase us down on motorcycles. They come at us wanting those booklets. The next two or three days we'll go back and we'll see people reading them, sitting in their front porches or in the village huts. And you never know what's going to happen. I was in Cambodia and we wanted to get into Laos. Laos is a very tough country, especially where we were at, in the jungles and the Mekong Delta in the remote area. And they shut us down, and I had all these scriptures, and I had all these booklets. I had probably about 30 boxes of scriptures in the La Laotian language, plus what we had in the Khmer. And we were in the village back in the jungles. They wouldn't let us in, so we went back into the jungles of Cambodia on the Mekong Delta. And we were sharing there and doing a medical cleanup, showing the Jesus film, 
And I was a little disappointed because I had all this stuff for Lao. One day, one of the village people says, you want to go to the market? I said, what market? We're out in the jungles. He goes, yeah, right down the path is Lao. And you're kidding. <laughs> so we were able to walk into that country, loaded up with scripture booklets. We had no ID on us, which wasn't very smart. We left all our passport and everything in Cambodia. And I had two young guys, first trip they have ever been on. And we saturated this. People were running up to us, grabbing bundles of booklets. People wanted these booklets so much. Well, somebody turned us in. I had my camera bag and I was setting it down. I seen the corner of my eye, a couple of guys coming with machine guns, soldiers. And I knew that, well, we were going to get arrested. They pulled us aside and uh, took us up to the military barracks or whatever they had. And I had my Bible with me. Thankfully, by God's grace, there was a doctor in in the market that day that was helping us in Cambodia and he intervened for us and uh, they let us go the amazing thing is he didn't say I couldn't come back we were in there illegally he just told me not to bring no booklets back but the amazing thing of that story I came back and I had all this stuff in Laotian and I was sharing this at my last time I ever spoke here and while we were there doing the medical clinic in that village, a Buddhist lady who opened up her house for us, allowed us to show the Jesus film, allowed us to pass out uh, booklets, preach, and everything. She says, I know where the underground church is in Lao. I can get that stuff in because I trade there and they don't bother me. And, it was, and you know, I had no other choice. I said, well, Lord, you provided it. I loaded up three, four plastic containers with Bibles, uh, booklets, a uh, Bible on tape that I get from Bible Alliance, the crank tape players, uh, medical supply. We had worm medicine from the worm project. And I decided to put a little letter in there. I don't know what made me do it, just write a letter. And I put it in there. And I sent it in, not knowing what happened. And I stood in this very room telling that story. And I ended saying, I never know what happened to those tracks or those booklets, but God does. I no sooner walked out of the room, out the door, my wife called and said, we got a letter from Lao, from a Christian church, saying they received all the booklets. So it was amazing that it happened right here. <laughs> the day I'm telling the story, and isn't that how, the, how God does things? It is impossible to please God without faith. Most of the time, I don't know what I'm doing. But I know I can trust God and I can go wherever he says to go at whatever cost. I don't fool myself. I've been in many, many war zones, many different places. I've seen a lot of horrible, horrible things. I have been in Bosnia and uh, Sudan and Rwanda. I've taken all your booklets into some of the worst war zones before the, even the Americans have gotten there because I believe I want to trust God. I don't kid myself. My wife does not kid herself. Our life is brief. I know I can go to Walmart and get run over. But I'd rather be out in the field serving Jesus, touching one life for Jesus Christ. Right. It is worth everything. And if I can say that at the end, if I can be able to finish my life saying, Lord, I ran my race. I'm not here for a show. I'm not here to make a name. I'm not here to even make, I don't even like the term on going into ministry. When we abide in him, when we fall in love with Jesus Christ, when you love Jesus Christ with all your heart, soul, mind, and body, and spirit, what are you going to do? You can't help but reproduce. Born to reproduce, as we are often hear. You cannot help but born to reproduce that love he has put into us. Jesus has saved me, and just as much as Jesus loves me, he loves them. Just as much as Jesus died for me, he died for them. So if I can go over there with one booklet, one track, one Bible, and touch one life for Jesus Christ, and if that's the only thing I ever did in my life, It'd be worth everything. Everything. And I'm so thankful for this ministry and so thankful for your faithfulness and your love for others. And believe me, I tell everybody and anyone I meet, to me this is the greatest one, the greatest ministries I know. And I thank you for supplying to me over all the, I could tell you story after story, and some of them you wouldn't even believe. But God is faithful. God bless you. Thank you.